Seven days might be a little aggressive to start a business, but hey, we're game day players, so let's do it. For the past 10 years, I have run companies, built brands, consulted for startups, and of course, launched my own businesses. I have a little bit of experience taking a tiny little pebble of an idea and making it into an in real life business that actually makes money. Now, some people make this process way more complicated than it needs to be. So that's why we are gonna do a little challenge together and we are gonna launch an online business in seven days. And I'm gonna give you the exact steps, the things I would do each of those days if I were launching a new business this week. My name is Brooke Roberts. I'm the founder of multiple companies, a former travel industry executive, and currently a digital nomad traveling the world while I work from wherever I want. Yep, yep, that's... That's my suitcase. Our focus here is all about online businesses. We're building a business that gives us the freedom to work from wherever we want. If you're thinking of a business that requires you to be in a very specific location to either deliver that product or provide that service in some way, then that's not necessarily the type of business that we're talking about. So if you're like, oh, I've always wanted to start a restaurant, this is not the video for you. Find another video. I promise there's some out there. But if you want to start an online business so you can take it wherever you are in the world, then this is the video for you. I'm currently coming to you live from Lisbon, Portugal. So if you're new around here and wanna see more videos just like this one, smash that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you want more business advice in the future. Let's be honest, building a business in seven days is a bit of a pipe dream, but I believe in taking action and getting things to market and testing and reiterating so you can learn from that process more than just hemming and hawing and figuring out the perfect plan to make it all happen. We're gonna do this in seven days and hopefully in seven days you will have some actual cash in the bank. Here's exactly what I would do day by day if I were gonna launch a brand new online business. Okay, day one. Let's actually figure out what business you're gonna start. I call this the start the right business phase. <laughs> So day one is where you have full liberties to go down all the crazy rabbit holes that you want. This is the only day though. It's the one day where you get to sort of dream and think about all the things you've ever been interested in, all the compliments you've ever gotten from people about what you're really good at, crazy harebrained ideas you've scribbled on the back of napkins. This is the perfect moment to bring all those up and start brainstorming. We're gonna focus on three different areas. The first area is what do you actually like? What are the things you're interested in? What are your current hobbies? How do you spend your free time? What brings you joy? What would you say you are passionate about? The next area that we wanna look at are the things you actually have a talent for. What are you good at? What do people give you compliments on? We wanna look at what do you like? What are you good at? And then the third and most important piece of all, what will people actually pay for? Pay money for, actual cash for. <laughs> you could love it and you could be great at it, but there may not be a big enough market for you to actually make any money with it. So we've got our three criteria. What do you like? What are you good at? And what will people actually pay for? You wanna brainstorm all the things in those three categories. Something you might have a passion for is fashion. You love it, you read all the fashion blogs, you subscribe to all the fashion magazines, you go to fashion week in your city, you're just like fashion girl, you love it. Now, in that next criteria, maybe you get compliments all the time about how you always look to put together. Maybe people are constantly telling you, oh my God, that outfit looks so great. Maybe people are asking you for advice, or maybe you go over to your friend's house and you go and through their closet and you start putting outfits together for them because they are clueless. By the way, I am one of those people. And then the third criteria is you wanna do, start doing some research. Are there books out there about how to design your personal style? Are there blog posts people are writing on this topic? Hint, there are. Are there YouTube videos? It's gonna come up later in day two as well, but I want you to start thinking about who's already doing this. I want you to go to Instagram accounts, blogs, YouTube channels, all around that niche that you started to define for yourself that could be a really good fit for you. If those things already exist, that means you already have a market proven for you. You know that people exist out there who want to pay for that service. What that service is gonna be or what that product's gonna be, we're gonna figure that out later, but you wanna come up with that sweet spot, that thing right in the middle where you like it, you have a talent for it, and people will actually pay for it. A lot of you guys already know the business you wanna run, but it's still a really good exercise to put your idea through this filter to start seeing is this actually a good business venture. Don't be too caught up in like, oh, whatever I start today has to be my passion. You're starting a business in a week. Lay off yourself a little bit. Give yourself some space to be like, this could be cool right now. I could bring in some extra money, could eventually turn into a full-time gig. 
that's what we're focused on. So don't be so hung up on whatever I create now has to be the thing that I'm doing for the next 30 years because it's just unrealistic. All right, day one, you found your sweet spot. Hopefully by the end of the day, you've zeroed in on exactly what the niche and genre and the type of business that you want to launch. Okay, welcome to day two. Now today is all about getting much more granular and we're gonna be talking about business plans. Now, before you freak out and think, oh, I don't have a business degree, I didn't go to business school, I don't have an MBA, whatever, it's fine. I didn't either, I have none of those things. But we are gonna ask some really critical questions of ourselves to really fine tune exactly what we're gonna do so that the next few days become much more simple in terms of what we're gonna do and how we're gonna make decisions. On day two, we just wanna answer a few critical questions that would be covered in a traditional business plan, but we're gonna do it in a much easier way. Now, I'm gonna have a download for you guys where you can go through and answer all these questions for yourself, plus a few more, and it's just super simple. It's three pages, and I just want you to get these ideas down on paper so that you can sort of say, okay, here's my plan of action, exactly what's happening in my business. Now, the first question you want to ask yourself is, what do you sell? <laughs> I'm focused on what you sell, the product or the service, because this is the part that makes it a business. This is the part that people value. We're gonna use the example of our fashionista lady who loves all things fashion. She knows that there is a business for her. So let's take her through this business planning process. She's gonna sell one-on-one -on -one consultations and a personal styling package. She's gonna outline exactly what that is. That's gonna say it takes about a week to go through the process. She does a one-on-one -on -one video consultation with her. She'll have a list of photos they need to send her. She'll have a questionnaire people fill out, etc. And at the end, she will send them a list of outfits and products and specific items that people need to go buy. She basically creates a shopping cart for them. So she'll outline exactly what that system looks like. She sells personal styling consultations that result in people having an amazing capsule wardrobe. Who do you serve? Now this is the part where you need to think about what we call an ideal customer avatar. Who's most likely to buy services like this? Maybe our fashionista, she has great style, but maybe where she sees a need is for guys. Maybe guys are like, I'm clueless, but I want to have a good style, but I have no idea what, where to begin. Or maybe she's going to focus on professional women who have zero style, but would love to look great. Me. That would be me. I would be your target market. To really figure out who would be the person that you would love for them to buy your product because that's who you serve. Because all your messaging and your communication, your marketing moving forward is gonna be all centered around that person. When you're thinking about who you serve, this is your ideal customer avatar, I want you to get really specific. Are they professionals? Are they really into sports? Are they city dwellers, like more cosmopolitan? Try to really get into the head and the mind of your ideal customer avatar. When you're thinking about who this is for, you also wanna be thinking about what are their pain points? And by pain points, I mean, what are they struggling with? What, how would they describe like, oh, getting out of bed anymore, I hate getting ready for work because I know I have nothing to wear, even though I have this huge closet full of stuff. Think about what their pain points might be. And this would be the part later on as you're growing your business, you'd wanna get some feedback from your ideal customers about what are their biggest struggles. But for now, you wanna be thinking th through them on your own and be thinking, okay, how can I help? Another little extra hack for you, remember those books and videos you found on this topic? Go through and read the comments. Cause people are gonna say like, what was missing from the video? Or they're gonna be talking about their biggest pain points and how the video or the book helps solve it, things like that. And that'll get you a better idea of exactly why people are struggling with this and then so you can fill in those gaps with your product or service. The next thing we need to think about in our business planning is why is this special? Why is what you offer compared to the books, the videos, the other services that might exist out there, why is yours better? It's gonna take a little bit of competitor analysis and I want you to look at everybody else who's offering this product or service and say, okay, this is what they do really well. This is where they kind of are lacking and I see some op opportunities to do it better. You can really start fine tuning exactly how you fit in this larger, broader marketplace. It also might just be on how you deliver the product or service in a special way. Maybe you're all about customer service experience and you're gonna give people really unique, specialized attention and that's your sort of special sauce that you bring to the table. When you're in the business world, you might hear your value proposition, right? This is what makes you valuable to people. Your value proposition should help differentiate you from all the other people offering what you're offering. Then we want to think about what does it actually include? So I want you to actually line by line say, okay, this is what my product is. 
get really granular on what you really think you're gonna deliver. Especially for service-based businesses, you wanna know exactly what you're gonna give to them because you don't want there to be any mystery about exactly what they're paying for. Then of course, you gotta figure out how much does it cost? How much will you charge for this product or this service? I want you to look at the competitors and think about what are the higher end rates and what are the lower end rates and then find something slightly in the middle there skewing more towards the higher end. All right, now we know our pricing. Then we wanna figure out how are you gonna find the people who actually buy the stuff? <laughs> this is your marketing plan, and we'll talk more about that in a minute, but you wanna just get a loose idea of exactly how you're gonna make sure people know what it is you do, what you offer, how much it costs, and how they can get access to it. And then the next thing is more of a systems thing, because I do believe in systems in your business, but you need to have a clear idea on exactly how you're gonna deliver whatever it is that you're offering. So you wanna have a system in place if you have to ship things out to people or if you have to have a digital download of some kind available or if you're doing consultations and services, what does that actually look like? Are you doing weekly meetings, monthly meetings, an intake call, a questionnaire, a check-in halfway through? Like exactly what does it look like? What are the systems you're gonna use to deliver that product or that service? You have to figure out all the sort of logistical things, but just enough to know like, okay, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this, all right? You just need to have that in place so that you're not overwhelmed once you do get that first client. At least have a system in place that you can refine and then tighten up as you get more clients, as you sell more product, et cetera. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, we're just doing this in seven days, but I just want you to have an idea what that will look like. Don't forget, I have your easiest business plan in the history of the world download right below. It's pretty brazen to have only a three-day business plan, but we're gonna do it. You can download it right below. It'll help you get on the paper exactly what it is you need to do. All right, day three. Now we're launching into something that some of you are going to love and some of you are going to hate with every fiber of your being. But on day three, we are going to throw together our branding. I am intentionally using the phrase throw together because I do not want you spending way too much time on branding. Branding is one of those things, especially on the type of business that we're launching, smaller scale, small business, likely a side hustle for a while. The brand isn't as important as other things that are gonna happen. I just want you to get something that is good enough. I am all on the good enough bandwagon. That's all you need to get this off the ground but we do want something so that you have something that's part of your branding that you're gonna use later. I want you to use a free tool like canva.com. There's a lot of logo generator tools. I'll link to a few of them down below. But basically you just wanna put in the name of your business, whether it's your name or some other name you've come up with and decide do you want an icon-based logo, a font-based logo, come up with something simple. If you're not artistic, this is gonna feel like pulling teeth. It's going to feel horrible, so I recommend getting on something like fiverr.com, throwing a little cash at the process and having somebody come up with something for you. If you are a little creative, you can go to town, get on Canva, get on Photoshop if you know how to use it and create something that's really nice. My advice on branding, when it comes to creating a brand that fits your business and fits your ideal customers is to keep it simple. It can just be text can just be your name, it can be black and white, and it's fine for now. We're doing this in one day. Please don't stress about this, just make it simple. So I would start going to something like Pinterest, find brands, color schemes, font combinations, websites that have the kind of mojo that you really love, and pin them to a Pinterest board, and really start to see what kind of themes pop out to you. You could have a really classic, elegant mojo going on, you could have something that's a little more punk rock, and hardcore, and edgy. There's a lot of different ways you can go with it, but just to see what sort of speaks to you, and what you think would speak to your ideal audience. So if you're gonna be a personal stylist, but you decide to go for men versus women, your branding might be a little bit different because you wanna attract your ideal audience. You wanna come up with a color scheme, just two or three colors that are gonna be your main focus, one or two fonts, no more than that, that you're gonna use on your website and other branding collateral. And then of course you need your central logo. That's all you need for your branding. Now we're into day four. Today you're gonna build your website. This might seem crazy to build a whole website in one day, but I promise you it is very simple because you're just going to have five core pages, the content that's going to go on them, and you're going to use an out of the box template to build this. Again, we're doing this in a week. We want to get to market fast. All these things, your branding, your marketing, your business planning, even you can fine tune those things later and get more granular and more strategic. But right now we just want to figure out what's our product, Who's it for? We wanna make it look good enough that people will wanna buy it and then we need to have a place to send people. And that's gonna be your website. There are a lot of different platforms you can build a website on. I've built sites on wordpress.org where it's self-hosted. I've used Blogger, Blogspot, 
way back in the day. But of course there's Wix and Weebly and so many other platforms that you can build a website on. I'm gonna recommend to you Squarespace because I think it's great. The templates are beautiful, it's modern, it's sleek, it's affordable. You're not gonna have a huge issues with uptime and reliability and worrying about plugins. And I think it's a lot more sophisticated than something like Wix or Weebly. All my businesses are run on Squarespace, so I can attest that you can make money by using a Squarespace site. You can sign up, you'll get a 14 day free trial, but here's a little hint. If you Google Squarespace coupon or Squarespace discount code, Squarespace is littering the interwebs with discount codes. <laughs> so you'll be able to find one that's gonna give you 10% off your platform once you do need to sign up. You're now on Squarespace, we're gonna keep it super simple. I'm gonna tell you exactly what template to use, what pages to include, and exactly where to get some great stock footage that's gonna make your site look awesome. With Squarespace, I want you to use the Pacific template. It's on there, I will link to it below. Don't worry about what's on it right now. With Squarespace, as you'll find, you can mess with the styles and the fonts and the colors and all that great stuff. I want you to use the Pacific template because of all the features that it has. This is really versatile and it just looks great out of the box. Now that you have Pacific loaded, you can delete all of the standard pages that are in there. You need five pages on your starter website. You need the homepage. It's gonna feature the problem and solution that you offer. I want you to lead with, wanna have better style? Whatever the question might be around the challenge or the problem facing your target market, I want you to lead with that up front so people hit the ground running, they go, okay, this is what this website's about. And then from there, I want you to have what I call the path section of your website. And you're gonna lead people to to your content and your blog, and then a little icon that says, hey, come check out my services and my product right here. And then another one that says, hey, contact me with questions. Then below that, you're gonna have a way for them to sign up for your newsletter. And Squarespace is great. You can just add a little newsletter block. You can collect emails right there. And that's really all you need on your homepage right now. That's it bare bones, to the point, that's your homepage. The next page you're gonna create is your about page. So give people a little taste of who you are, what you do, why you do it, and who you serve. Kind of answer those questions in a more flowery way. Maybe you have a couple of photos of yourself. Maybe you have some testimonials from people that you've helped in the past. Your about page is really focusing on who you are and how you actually help people. It's not just like, here's my life story. It needs to be your story as it centers around the product or the service that you offer, the story of your business, the story of your brand. The next page you need to have is your services and your products. This is the actual stuff people pay for. So you need to give them details about what it is they're actually getting. What's included when they hit buy now and, and give you their credit card information. When they sign up for a consultation for you, what exactly do they get for that? And of course, how much does it cost? The next page you need to have is your content page. This is typically gonna be your blog, like on Squarespace it's called the blog, but this is gonna be your feed of content. We're gonna talk about this in a second in more detail because you're gonna do this on another day, but you need to have a place where you are gonna roll out consistent content, free value-based content to your target market. The last page you need is your contact page. How can people get in touch with you if they have questions or wanna partner with you or work with you and they're not ready just yet to hit that buy button? That's it, that's all we need right now. It's just your bare bones website because you're doing it in a day. Of course you can do bigger, better, bolder things, absolutely, if you have the time for that, but you're doing this in one day. So get out there, get on Squarespace and get your site launched. And once you do that, that, come back to this video, leave a comment with a link to your site so I can come check it out. One thing to think about with Squarespace is it's very visually driven. It's all about cool imagery. So we're gonna use some great stock footage. The place I highly recommend you go to for wonderful, beautiful, free stock footage is unsplash.com. I will link it below. They have beautiful stock images. You can search key terms and find some really great images to throw up on your site right now. All right, you guys, we're halfway through launching our business. Now, the next two days are focused purely on marketing. Yep, that's right, marketing. Day five is all about building your launch list. Remember, if you're not selling something to someone, you don't have a business, you have a hobby. So we need to round up our ideal clients and our ideal potential customers into one place so that when we're ready to say, hey, I do this thing, or I have this product, or I have this service, that they're there, ready, you have a captive audience to share what you're doing with them. So we wanna build a launch list, somebody you can tell about your product or service service when it's ready to go. There's three core components to what you're gonna do today. First, you're gonna share. 
share, share, share your new business. So if you are doing styling consultations or you wanna start doing web design for punk bands or you want to start doing nutrition plans for busy moms, whatever it is you figured out is your business, you wanna start sharing it with people. We're not going for the hard sell. Right now we're just focused on sharing. The reason this is really important is because you're gonna be basically approaching the people who already know you, like you, and trust you. This is the warmest, friendliest audience you're ever gonna interact with. You want to start practicing your pitch and start practicing sharing. I want you to start thinking about how you're gonna share it and who you're gonna share it with. Come up with a list of 50 to 100 people that you could share your new venture with. The goal here is not to sell them on whatever you're doing, you're just letting them know that you're doing this new thing. And as you tell more people, you'll fine tune your pitch, you'll get it out there more while people will be like, oh, I'm not a punk band that needs a website, but maybe their nephew is in a punk band that needs a website. So you just never know who you're gonna tell that it might be really valuable later on when you're ready to launch. And every time you tell people about it, if they seem interested in it, you can ask them, hey, do you want me to email you when I've launched it and I'm ready to go and maybe you could share it with anybody you think would be interested? These are people who are already your friends, already your family, they already like you. And so the likelihood that they wanna see you succeed is probably pretty high. So likely they'll say, yeah, totally add me to the email list. You need a list of email addresses, some actual people who are interested in what you have have to offer. Now, the reason I'm telling you to get email addresses and not say, mm, I don't know, grow a Facebook page or a Facebook group or an Instagram account or Twitter, you don't own that land. That's like building your house on stolen land. You don't control those platforms. They are businesses and they can change the rules any day. Ask anybody who built their business 10 years ago on their Facebook page and ask them how much engagement interaction they're getting with their hundreds, maybe millions of followers there. It probably decreased quite a bit over the last few years. Same thing on Instagram. It used to be this really great organically growing platform and now people who've built their businesses and their brands on there are having a lot harder time reaching their target audience. I want you to focus on gathering email addresses because those are the things that you actually own. You can change email service providers from MailChimp to ConvertKit to Infusionsoft to ActiveCampaign 27 different times if you want to. All those contacts remain yours. You have a direct line of communication. And then we wanna start networking a little bit broader. So first First, we were sharing it with the people who already know us, they like us, they trust us. Now we wanna look at the larger network, looking at online forums, Facebook groups, in-person networking events, lots of different places where you can start meeting people within your niche or where your target market hangs out. You just wanna get in there and start adding value, start listening to the conversation, seeing what people are chatting about, chiming in with your ideas and how you can add value in different ways. While you're not focused as much on sharing, hey, this is what I do, you're more focused on adding value through your expertise and your knowledge because a lot of these places they're gonna get really turned off when this new person walks in and says hey I'm a personal stylist come buy my product don't hard sell people just get in there add value start meeting people exchanging ideas and who knows you might have some partnerships in the future some collaborations and of course future potential clients it's day six now today six is all about your communication strategy so your websites built you started sharing what you're doing you're driving a little traffic to your website people are learning they're signing up for your email email list, you're gathering emails, all that stuff's moving and cranking along. Now on day six, we wanna come up with your communication strategy, all about delivering free value. This is not your product or service. This is about communicating your expertise, your knowledge, giving guidance, support, help, information, entertainment, what have you, to your ideal client. You want to use your communication plan as the magnet. This is the stuff that's gonna draw people in. They're gonna find you through this content in an organic fashion. What you need to decide first is what is the medium in which you will deliver this content? Is it going to be written? Are you gonna write blog posts or articles? Is it gonna be audio? Maybe you launch a podcast. Is it going to be video? Maybe you launch a YouTube channel. And how you decide which content style you choose, I would just lean into whatever's easiest for you. The idea of writing content to you just makes you freak out and you're like, no, I can't, but I, you can talk all day long, then maybe a podcast is the right move. If being on camera and talking on video kind of freaks you out a little bit, maybe don't do video. Figure out whatever's easiest for you and if you like them all and you're thinking, oh, I could do video or audio or written, I'm just amazing, good 
for you. Do the one that has the lowest barrier to entry right now or where you feel like you can get things done because it's all about actually taking action and being able to be consistent with it. If you love to be on camera but you are horrible at editing and you don't have cash right now to hire an editor, then maybe video is not where you begin. Pick your medium in which you will deliver the content. Now we're gonna focus on the content pyramid which includes your hero, your hub, and your hybrid content. Your hero content is the stuff that centers around big events, important times of year within your niche. So back to our fashionista example, you might create hero content around the big annual Nordstrom sale or around summer, fall, winter wardrobe ideas. This could also be big pillar questions that are asked. For me, for one of my businesses, one of my hero pieces of content is how to get a job and study abroad. I know it's so random, it seems hyper niche to a lot of you, but that single piece of content continues to drive thousands and thousands of visitors to my website every single month. You might only create maybe one of these every quarter or there's one piece that only happens once a year. Ride the coattails of these sort of bigger annual or seasonal things happening in your niche in your industry. Your hub content is your standard weekly content. So whether you're doing a weekly blog post, a weekly video, weekly podcast, and it doesn't necessarily have to be weekly. It could be every other week, but it should be pretty consistent. You don't want to do it once a month or once every other month. You want to be at least every other week. I recommend every single week. And it's typically going to help you get found in search when somebody types in on YouTube or on Google. It's going to help you get traffic and new leads through search engine optimization or SEO. Then there's your hygiene content. Now this is the stuff you're probably going to post at least once a day and this is where it's going to be likely your social media strategy. We can get more into that later but I want you to choose one platform and really just focus there and get good at that. So if you feel like okay I'm doing fashion, it's very visual, I'm going to be on Instagram that makes really good sense for you. Then have an Instagram account and just post there once a day. Maybe if you're the punk music website designer and the punk music crowd, that they're really engaged and interactive on Twitter, maybe that's where you need to be. You have to figure out where your audience is and then just choose the social media platform that makes sense for your business. And then you want to consistently post there every day. The next thing I want you to do in terms of your communication plan is open up a document and start brainstorming at least 50 topic ideas for pieces of content that you could deliver. They need to be hero content or hub content. Your hygiene content, you'll just come up with those and they can be scheduled out, that's totally fine. But your hero and your hub content, that's stuff that you wanna put into an editorial calendar. But if you can't come up with 50 ideas for your genre, for your niche, then you may not be ready to actually build this particular business. So you really wanna make sure that you have enough content, enough expertise, enough information to share on a free level before you start saying, I can run a whole business around this. So come up with your 50 ideas, put them down so you have this sort of treasure trove of ideas that you can come back to every single week. Now with our communication strategy, you wanna figure out more of the logistics. Okay, when are you gonna deliver this content? When are you gonna create it? How are you gonna distribute it and promote it? Come up with a little plan. Say Monday, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna write the blog post and I'm gonna publish it on Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and I'm gonna email it to my email subscribers and I'm gonna publish it on my Instagram account and through my Instagram stories. Maybe that's your plan of action moving forward. You just wanna have an idea of how you're gonna create the content and how you're gonna distribute it. All right, that's day six. You guys your communication strategy all locked down. Now it's day seven. Day seven is all about the launch, baby. We're gonna put whatever it is that you've created out into the world in a big way and let everybody know it's available. On this day, we are going to reward our early adopters. All those people who gave you their email or reached out to you or sent you a DM. On this day, we are gonna announce to the world I am open for business. And this is when you're gonna send them the link to your product and services page. And this is where you might give a discount code. For a service-based business, when you launch, this might be like, okay, the first five people sign up, I'm gonna do a free consultation and design three go-to outfits for you that you can use in the next two weeks. The idea here for service-based businesses, you need to get those testimonials. So if you can give your service away for free to a limited number of people, that's gonna help get more people in the door when you have proven case study that you can show case on your website and your social media, etc. For product-based businesses, it's all about that pre-sale. Likely your product isn't quite ready yet. You might need some more time to get that out the door. Whether you're doing an ebook that you're going to sell or you're going to have something manufactured, you need to understand what's the timeline and what's it going to look like and then do a discounted pre-sale to your ride or die fans. And these are going to be the people who've signed up for your email list, they've messaged you, you know that they are into what you're doing. So whether you're doing it for free at 
a discount or doing a pre-sale of some kind, this is the way that you're gonna figure out, do I actually have a business? Because people are gonna actually hand you cash or they won't. If they don't, if nobody buys or nobody signs up, that just gives you more data on how you either need to fine tune your message and, and be able to better communicate the value of what you're offering, or it means you need to sort of go back to square one, day one, and really assess if there's a big enough demand for what it is that you're delivering. All right, you guys, that's my process. If I were gonna launch a new business today, this is exactly what I would do to get it off the ground, get it out into the world, and start testing, reiterating, shifting, pivoting as best as I can. As an entrepreneur, as someone who's launched multiple businesses, who's run companies, launched brands, I've seen a lot of different ways to go about this, where it's really fine-tuned, well-funded. For me, the best way to figure out if you have a great business idea or if you're cut out to be an entrepreneur is to just get started, to take action. So if nothing else, use this as a challenge for yourself to say, okay, I've always thought about doing this and I've kind of been daydreaming about it a little bit. If you could just take yourself through these seven steps and use my business business plan to get you going, I promise you that you follow these seven steps, you will have the beginnings of a really great and successful business. If you want to learn more about the different ways I make money through my different businesses, check out this video here. I'm going to link to it here or down below in the description. You can see the 10 ways that I actually make money while I travel the world. I know this is a long one, you guys. Thanks so much for hanging with me and I hope this was helpful to you. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what kind of business you think you want to launch and what we can expect to see from you, hopefully in the next seven days. If you liked this video, please give me a little thumbs up to tell the YouTube gods, i.e. the algorithm, that you actually like this content and you want to see more of it from me. And if you want more videos about growing your career, launching a business, and living your most badass life, then hit that subscribe button and you'll never miss a video from me again. And remember, every day you postpone a dream, you weaken it a little. So if your dream is to run a business, get out there and make some magic happen.